Week 8 in the MLB delivered an absolute masterpiece. Baseball's most exciting pitching prospect, possibly ever, was tasked with topping his first impression. The Twins and Guardians met to see who's the realest team in the Central, and the best in the West Mariners were tested by taking on the two monsters of the East. There was so much to prove this week in the MLB. Here's what went down in Week 8. Chapter 1 Championship Hangover The two teams that played in the Fall Classic last year have both gotten off to sputtering starts in 2024. Both the D-backs and the Rangers are below 500 eight weeks into the season, and while no one is counting either of them out yet, there are some disturbing trends in both camps. With the injuries to the Ranger rotation, you could forgive them for having to patch together the pitching staff, but the team's much more prevalent problem has been the offense. The Angels entered last weekend's series with a bottom 10 starting rotation, but even that couldn't get the Ranger offense going. Tyler Anderson was basically flawless in Game 1, and Jose Soriano was a Corey Seager solo shot away from shutting out the Rangers through 8 innings. Even the game they won in this series took Texas 13 innings to score 3 runs, and their third run they got via walk-off hit by pitch. If that's what the Angels were able to do against this team, imagine what the best team in baseball could do. This series wasn't even close. The Phillies were absolutely dominant. Ranger Suarez picked up a season-high 10 Ks in Game 1, and Zach Wheeler did more than enough to earn the win in Game 3. The only game this week that Texas was able to score more than 3 runs was Game 2 on Wednesday. The final score of that game? Oh. If that's what the reigning champions are going through, the reigning runners-up must not be faring much better. Oh. The D-backs bullpen has been horrendous this season, and even a bottom 10 offense in the Tigers was able to score seemingly at will in this series. Offensively, Corbin Carroll has been a walking sophomore slump, and the lineup really falls off in the bottom half. A rare scoreless bullpen effort on Sunday gave the D-backs a win in the series, but the team would be getting on a plane to face the Dodgers that night. If what the Phillies did to the Rangers was any indication, this series could get ugly. The team battled back, but couldn't overcome the early deficit in Game 1. Game 2, however, was a fantastic team win. Brandon Fott has been slowly recovering his ERA after a rough early April and continued with a very strong outing here. Along with another lockdown bullpen performance, the team took the win in Game 2. With the series on the line, Ryan Nelson dialed up his best outing of the season and with the bullpen again stepping up to deliver a scoreless performance in Game 3. Arizona is still below 500 and out of the playoff picture, but hopefully they can use a very impressive series win to build some momentum. Chapter 2 Proving Grounds No team has been hotter in the American League than the Twins. After a bad start to the season and injuries to several key pieces, many were quick to write off Minnesota. A 12-game win streak got the Twins right back into the hunt, and this week they had the chance to prove they're the real deal in a division battle with the Guardians. Cleveland has handled everything thrown at them so far this season and are trying to prove they are better than their division and ready to take the fight to the Yankees and Orioles. The Guardians continued their strong pitching staff from last year, but a top 5 offense in baseball has made Cleveland look like they could have sleeper pennant winning potential. The rotation was stellar in this series, with all three Cleveland starters going 6 or more and allowing 1 or less. Tristan McKenzie is making a name for himself as a top of the rotation arm, and Tanner Bybee and Logan Allen have had solid sophomore campaigns. Jose Ramirez came up with big hits in the first two games before Will Brennan brought out the brooms in game three. A swing and a drive! High! Deep to right! This ball's gone! And a walk-off! Three-run home run for Will Brennan! The sweep put the Guardians back to six games over Minnesota in the Central. Over in the NL Central, the new number one prospect in baseball was due to make his second and third big league starts this week. After an impressive debut, even more eyes were on Skeens in his second outing against the Cubs. Despite all the hype, no one could have expected this. 0-2 from Paul Skeens. He struck him out with 100. Paul Skeens strikes out the first three Cubs. Strike three call. Paul Skeens has struck the ball out. Six in a row to start the game. Talkman, 3-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. 100 miles an hour. 11 strikeouts for Skeens. Six innings of no-hit baseball in his first career start on the road. 
Skeens was absolutely dominant and Pittsburgh grabbed the win in that game. This time they were able to take the momentum into the rest of the series, taking 3 out of 4 against Chicago. Skeens next start would be against the Giants, who are trying to crawl their way back up the standings in the West. It was clear San Francisco had the game plan to put the ball in play against Skeens, but even that didn't help, with the Giants only managing one run in 6 innings. As soon as Skeens left though, the Pirates bullpen collapsed again, leading to a Giants comeback win. The Pirates didn't have a lot going for them this season anyway, but the arrival of Skeens has added some excitement around Pittsburgh. I'm pretty confident the team won't do much in 2024, but the future feels promising. Chapter 3, What You're Made Of The Mariners have established themselves as the best team in the West so far this season, but this week they'd fly across the country to take on the cream of the crop in the American League. Seattle has arguably the best rotation in baseball, and while the lineup is still a weakness, they've been able to do just enough to get wins. Against teams like the Orioles and Yankees, however, it's a different ballgame. New York and Baltimore rank top 10 in offense, starting pitching, and bullpen, with neither team having a clear weakness. How would this Seattle rotation fare against the big dogs? First on the block was Bryce Miller, who had a scheduled start in both series. Miller entered this week with a 2.66 ERA and left with it nearly a full run higher, allowing 9 runs and taking the loss in both starts. George Kirby got lit up for 9 hits and 5 runs on Sunday, taking the loss, and while Luis Castillo was solid, was outdueled by Grayson Rodriguez on Saturday. The Mariners showed some life though. After being shut out by Rodriguez through 6 innings, the team battled back off the O's bullpen and stole the win. Another dramatic late inning comeback on Monday was followed by the team's best pitching performance of the week from none other than Brian Wu. Wu shut the Yankees out through 6 innings on Tuesday, giving the team their only easy win of the road trip. The Yankees took the next two games pretty handily, but after a week that looked like it could be disastrous for Seattle, they survived, going 3-4 and four in 7 games and maintaining their lead in the West. Chapter 4, Missouri Mob Two of the biggest surprises in baseball this season have both come out of Missouri. The Royals have surprisingly been one of the best teams in baseball, and the Cardinals have surprisingly been just as bad as last year. Other than sharing the same home state, these two teams could not be any more different. The Royals have a young and exciting lineup that has produced a top 5 offense in baseball, while the Cardinals have aging former stars who've produced the worst offense in the National League. The Royals have combined undervalued veterans and electric young talent to turn the rotation into a top 3 staff in baseball, while the Cardinals' youngest starter is 34 and the pitching staff has been bottom 10 in the league. Everyone seems to believe the Royals can't continue to be this good and the Cardinals can't continue to be this bad and maybe week 8 will shine some insight on the true nature of these teams. The Royals kicked off last week with a convincing weekend sweep of the A's. Bobby Witt Jr. has been on fire to start the season and Salvador Perez looked like he's back in his prime. But it was the pitching rotation that was absolutely masterful in this series. Cole Reagans, Brady Singer, and Seth Lugo all dominated the Week A's lineup. KC would keep on rolling in the week, crushing Detroit 26-9 in their three-game series. Cole Reagans put the exclamation point on the perfect week with a career-high 12 Ks on Wednesday. The Cardinals, on the other hand, would face a tough interleague schedule, playing the Red Sox and Orioles this week. In Game 1, it was the youngsters who carried the offense with four of them going deep in the win. In Game 2, Miles Michaelis delivered 5 solid innings and was able to hand the game over the Cardinals biggest strength, the bullpen, who secured the series win. The Orioles would be a much tougher test during the week, but again the Cardinals young bats came to play in this series. Mason Wynn looks like he's starting to figure out the offensive side of his game in the big leagues and Nolan Gorman is back to being a dangerous power threat. Even more unknown players like Alec Burleson and Michael Ciani produced big moments in this series and the Cards managed to complete the sweep. Goldschmidt and Arenado continue to struggle, but if St. Louis can start to get production from their young talent, the Central is still wide open in the National League. Chapter 5, Most Valuable Player Eight weeks into the season, let's take a look at how the MVP race is shaking up in both leagues. The MVP in the National League looks pretty clear cut. Mookie and Shohei are dominating the leaderboards, and the Dodgers are almost certain to win the West. Unless Acuna can catch some fire or Harper carries the Phillies to a pennant, it looks like the MVP will be back in LA. The AL race on the other hand looks like a very intriguing battle. Right now it feels like Juan Soto is the front runner in his first season in pinstripes. Soto has been torrid since the start of the season and the Yankees are the team to beat in the AL. 
but if the Orioles could take the East from the Yankees, it's hard to build a case against Gunnar Henderson. Henderson has been the catalyst to this O's team and is on pace for over 40 homers. The only player in baseball with more home runs is Kyle Tucker, and if the Astros manage to turn their season around, Tucker becomes an easy favorite to be the MVP. Finally, the most surprising team in the AL has been the Royals, and maybe if Bobby Witt can carry this team deep into the playoffs, he becomes a sneaky late season MVP candidate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps me out a ton. Thanks for watching.